Alright guys, let's finally finish up coding this dude, making him move around, bump into stuff, and then at the end of this tutorial we're going to run it and see how it works. So let's go ahead and delete everything and set player position, because instead of just setting his position where we want him to go, we're going to add some code to make sure he doesn't bump into something first, and then if so nothing's there that he can bump into, then we're going to be setting his position. So that's why we need to change this uh, method up a bit. So this is the only method we need to change, so don't worry, that's the only thing we're going to be covering in this tutorial. So the first thing we need to do is this, cg point, just like that, fill it in for me, tile c-o-o-r-d, why do I always put c-o-o-r-e-d, I don't know, but I do, it. and set this equal to st layer and tile for position just like that in position so this is actually the method we built in the last tutorial so if you have a different name then of course put whatever you named it in there but what we're going to be doing is pretty much getting passing it in a position and it converts it to the tile coordinates the thing that I was talking to you guys about last tutorial so now that we have the tile coordinates here's what we do Go ahead and make another int variable and name it tile g id and set this equal to st layer. Why is that not turning blue? All right, tile g i d at tile chord. And you're saying, all right, I have no idea what this is. Well, check this out. Each tile has. Let me explain what this. Is. Whenever we get the coordinates for a tile, we then use those coordinates to get something called an ID for that tile. Each tile on your map has a unique ID number, and that's what this GID is. I know it's weird, but it stands for like global ID number or something like this. And this is um, how we identify tiles. So what we can do once we have those tile coordinates is we need to get that unique ID number for the tile. So now each unique ID number is stored in a variable called tile GID. And this is the tile that we want to move to. Again, if you're saying, all right, ID numbers are confusing, then don't take it up with me. Take it up with whoever made tile in Cocos 2D. That's how they made it. So, you know, that's what we got to deal with. So now if we're saying, all right, why do we even need to get the tiles ID number? Once we have the tiles ID number, we can access their properties, aka that collidable property that we made. No, collidable equals true. Yes. So you'll see. All right. So let's go ahead and do this. If tile GID, which pretty much means if the tile has an ID number, what we want to do, we want to NS dictionary properties. Looks good. All right, by the way, each of those properties that we made in the last tutorial are stored in an NS dictionary. So that's why we need to, you know, make an NS dictionary variable. So let's just go ahead and set this properties view, um, uh, I mean variable equal to the map properties for GID and tile GID. So what we're saying is all right, we want to get all of the properties for a certain tile. What tile? The tile that we want to move to. So now all of the properties are stored in a variable card properties. So now let's just go ahead and make another check. If properties, so if properties exist, what do we want to do? Well, the first thing we want to do is get this. Probably easier if I just type it ns string and just go ahead and make a variable called collision and set this equal to properties which is your dictionary values for key collidable so remember we wrote a property called collidable and we set it equal to the value true if it was read so this collidable is either going to be equal to true or it's not going to exist at all so when this is equal to true we know that this means this dude should not be walking in this area so 
how do we go about doing this? It's very easy. The first thing we need to do is compare our results to whatever this collision threw back and see if it actually is equal to true. So here's how we do this. If collision is exactly equal to collision compare true and you need to throw that in since it's a string alright and set this to ns ordered same that's how you compare strings alright return so alright now I can finally talk about what I want to talk about so this pretty much is going to get the property of the tile wherever the tile is collidable and if that property returns true then we know that that tile is a tile that we should not be able to move to so what this is going to do is just return our dude and we're saying uh... alright what's going on here let me do this this is going to clear everything up i promise position equals position alright forget anything i said in like the last ten minutes and listen here because now everything is tied together now i can begin explaining what this means this set player position method all it does is it takes your dude and it moves him to a new position however whenever we were making our map we listed certain tiles that that dude was not able to move to as in the trees, the mountain, the fence, he should not be able to move there. So what we did is we added a property to those tiles named collidable and we put a key equal to be true if he was not able to move there. So what this method does is pretty much this. It gets whatever position that we're moving to and it checks if that collidable property is true and if it's true then it's going to return our method without doing anything at all and then this pretty much runs this bit of code and does nothing but if this method doesn't return then what it's going to do is take the dude's position and move him to his destination so if we try to move him somewhere and he's not supposed to be there then it's going to run this bit of code return this method without doing anything without moving anybody but if this doesn't return then this bit of code is going to successfully run and he's going to be able to move to his new position so the last thing that we're going to need to do is just go ahead and copy this and go ahead and just paste it right here so I don't get a little issue warning and now let's go ahead and build and run this and so we got I probably typed something wrong here along uh, yeah, I know I typed something wrong. I feel it in my blood. Come on, where are you? Where are you? There we go. So let me pause this and I'll see what I typed wrong. Well, that was embarrassing, guys. I accidentally typed um, ST layer right here. Let me see if I can undo this. See, I accidentally typed ST layer down there instead of self and of course this method is in this class so that's why I need itself and I also accidentally just recopied this header instead of putting our new um, method header in here so now let me go ahead and build and run this and hopefully it runs if it messes up this time this is gonna be pretty embarrassing but alright let's see if this finally works so let me move this guy up 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 and let's see if he stops when he gets to the fence there we go so as you can see when I try to move him up he won't go through the fence just like we want him to he can move around down go through the flowers and let's see try move him in some trees can't do that either so now as you can see this uh, game is working properly like it should colliding into the areas that we painted and marked as collidable so we're saying alright what is happening whenever we try to move him to a place that's collidable we say alright move here so then when we call the method to move him there it returns a blank method and it doesn't do anything but when we try to move him to a space that isn't collidable it takes his position and sets it equal to that new position so that's all this code does so now I can minimize this and forget about it move on to the next part of this program 
But for now, that's all I got for you guys for this tutorial. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, don't forget to check out my forum. So again, like I said, thank you. Don't forget to buy my iPhone apps and I will see you guys later.